Hi, we're doing a quick tutorial on how to make a children's mask. This has a nose piece in it and three quarter inch elastic with a button closure on the side. Now we have kits made at so and so that use a 16 inch piece of elastic, excuse me, an 18 inch piece of elastic and buttons on two sides of the mask. It would be button over here. But I'm down to the bitter ends of my elastic here. You can get the elastic at Amazon. Um, you can get 11 yards for about $20. Um, and you can get 22 masks out of that if you're using the 18 inch piece of elastic with a button on either side. This tutorial is going to show you how to do it with a strap because like I said, I'm down to the very ends of my elastic. Um, okay, what you're going to need is the pattern and the template which um, there's a link on the end of the video for the pattern and the template. The pattern has pictures. Um, it's a download that Devery Bongard edited um, to show you how to do this. Um, the template, there are two templates in the pattern. This is the one for the 3 to 6. There's also a 7 to 12. I marked, I made a plastic template because I was making multiples and marked on the template where the nose piece goes, position of the nose piece, position of the button. I put an arrow on here because a lot of my children's prints are directional and I wanted to make sure that the patterns were all in the right direction for the pattern here. Um, I also made a note, I, want, I need to cut two outsides and two insides. Now these are mirrors, so you may have to make sure that your fabric is face to face or back to back also two interfacings. Talk about that in a second. We're also going to need to cut one nose piece that's two by four and a half inches that's in the pattern. The elastic, if you're doing a strap, you want your strap to be about three by eight and your elastic to be about ten inches. Okay? Now if you're going to interface you'll need a fusible non-woven interfacing. The interfacing is a choice. Um, it gives you a substantial layer of protection from virus particles, but it also makes the mask much hotter. So on the younger children's masks, I made a decision to not interface because um, it's a toss-up. We want to keep it on the kid's face, okay? So if you have a compliant child, you may not have a problem. I have a two-year-old, that uh, two-year-old grandson that doesn't want any part of it. So when I did interface the mask between the younger children or the yard, yard, uh, older ones, I only interfaced that portion right there. Just the nose portion and uh, not the cheeks. No need to make it hotter than it needed to be. So I put the fusible here on both pieces. Now remember you need to fold your fusible face to face as well. And I just cut this portion, fused it on before I sewed this seam. Okay? So non-woven fusible interfacing thin. You want something like Pellon's Featherweight. That's a very good one to use for this. Okay? So here's the pattern. I just trace around it with a pen, cut out inside and outside. Interface if you choose. All right. Other things you're going to need. Um, some pins, a button, chopstick for turning things right side out, a pair of scissors. Um, I used pinking shears to pink that inner curve, otherwise just clip the curve. And I have a hemostat for turning the nose piece inside out. Okay, also, this is what I use for the nose piece. On our kits, we had um, those plastic and metal pieces that are used to close coffee bags. They're called coffee bag closures. You can get them in a bag on Amazon. They're seven inches long, and you cut them in half for this. Um, some people have been uh, twisting twist ties together, but that twist may be a bump that could be uncomfortable. And I don't know how washable it is. Now this is plant twist tie out of my gardening cart. 
It's about five bucks for 200 feet at Home Depot or Lowe's. All you do is cut off a, a piece that's about eight inches long, a little cutter on the side. I've had pieces of this that I've used in my garden literally for years outside and it's still holding up just fine. So I take my piece, fold it in half, flat, and then measure out my three and a half inches that I need for the finished and just turn over the ends and pinch it tight. Okay, they don't need to twist. This is going to slide in and out of the mask beautifully. It's washable. It doesn't ever need to come out. Okay? And, good thing, it's inexpensive and easy to get. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do here is make the nose piece. All you do is fold that four and a half inch piece in half. The opening's on the bottom. I'm going to stitch from here down across the bottom and leave this end open. Okay, so here we go. I got my quarter inch foot on the machine. Wake up, silly machine. There we go. Knot that in. Okay, so I need to go one more stitch. There we go. Okay, and then down this side. corners. And just reach in with the hemostat and grab. I'm going to just shove that seam allowance down inside and turn the whole thing right side out here. Now I've been in the garden so I have absolutely no fingernails left. There we go. Come on you. There it is. Okay, so push the hemostat back in and punch out the corners. That one and that one. And I just run it along the crease to unfold everything. And now I'll press this. And I want to take this open edge and fold it under a quarter inch or so and press that one as well. Okay, so this is all set to go. And let's do the strap. So we want to take the strap and fold it in half. Increase this. And then I'm going to fold it to the center. I'm not going to go all the way to the center. I did that before and discovered that with a three-quarter inch elastic, um, it was too tight uh, to get the end of the elastic all the way tucked in. So I'm leaving a space here, like that, and fold it over. This way, when I put the elastic in, it's going to completely cover that outer edge of the elastic. Okay, so I'm going to fold over one end. Give it about a half inch or so. I want to get a good grip on that elastic. Okay, so here we go with the strap. Let's tuck in the end and close this up. Okay, that see that completely covers the end of the elastic now, where it didn't before. And I'm going to pin that edge and. I'm going to start sewing down this side, over and back. to sew um, and reverse myself here so I'm, I'm kind of sewing a couple of times over the elastic end and then back down the other side. So 
here's our strap all completed. Ready to go over there. And now we'll do the two fronts. There we go. And my thread tail stuck there. And here's the mask front. Just line it up. I'm not a pinner. I only pin when there's detail in here. Remember, this is a mask. It's not a quilt block. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Okay. Now, we'll pink these edges. makes it a little easier to it'll turn more evenly. You won't get as many wrinkles in that curved edge. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to reach in with this. I find actually my bigger iron works better, but for purposes of the tutorial, this works. Um, the snout on my iron is a little sharper than this is, and all I want to do, I'm just pushing against the seam allowance just to flip it in one direction. Okay, just a little bit there. Now, you'll note I've got, this is, this top curve is the nose. This is the chin piece. Put them both in the same direction, lining and front. And iron them both the same way. Sounds counterintuitive, but when we put these together face to face, they'll be mirror images of each other and that way, see just like that, just kind of curve it to one side. And this way when it's done, the seam allowances will nest because they'll be in actually in opposite directions. Okay, so now the nose piece goes in. I'm going to fold this in half and just put a little finger crease in here so I know where the middle of this is. Right there, you can see the crease. Make sure you're lining this up with the top. I did one before and I had it upside down. Okay, position the crease over the seam allowance with about a half inch to spare. Pin through the seam allowance. And I'm going to line this up again about a half inch up, pin in the folded over end, and keep it all nice and straight here. This is the finished end that will also be kept open. So we're going to start sewing here, go down, this is the open end, down the side, across the fold, and back up. You need to turn it inside out to do this. up to the edge and come out this way. Take the pins out as you go to make your life easier. You don't want to have to deal with a porcupine. So now the nose piece is in. Here's the opening where that piece of um, this wire will eventually go right in here. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to put these face to face, making sure that I've got the curve going in the same direction. Like I said, I did sew one upside down. I had to take it all apart. Okay, so this is the four pin system here. Nest the top seam allowances, put in a pin. One end, even up, 
one pin that's all you need anything more and it gets hard to hold come on you see it said here it is this is the chin seam nest the seam allowances again and there we go now this end is where the strap has to go so we're going to take this strap and roll it up just like that and tuck it inside here just like that I leave it good quarter inch sticking it out sticking out we don't want to line it with this or this because these are angles you want it perpendicular to the end the short little end okay so I'll fold this up line that up and put a pin in this way come on get you get a little straighter there there we go now, the original pattern had you leave one end open to turn this whole thing. You had to squeeze all this out through that one inch finished hole. That was kind of silly. So we're leaving about two and a half inches open on the bottom edge. So I'm going to start here about an inch and a half in, go up, over, all the way around, and stop here. Okay, this just takes a minute. So here we go, I'm about an inch and a half from the end. And here, going across the strap and, and pivot. Now I can take my pin out. I'll tuck that strap in a little tighter there so it gets out of my way. actually do one of these in about 20, 25 minutes or so. What do I feel in there? There it is. Close the bottom end. Okay, and here's the chin. So I've got about two inches, two plus inches open here. Okay, trim the corners. I don't really, I don't trim the strap end because I want to make sure that there's a good grab of fabric. That's going to take a lot of pulling. And here we go. We're just going to push these corners out. This is the one around the strap. And turn the whole rest of this inside out. Okay, so here's the opposite corner where the button's going to go. So here it is, turned right side out, and a crease a little bit here along the seam at the nose to make sure it's all completely unfolded. And then we're just going to press everything. Now I am an extreme righty, and this is all to the left of me, so it's a little awkward. look like a klutz and I am when I'm using my left hand press that press the chin here 
and here where the opening is. See how it's kind of sticking up? If you stick your fingers into the opening, it will push the seam allowance down and then just pull a fraction, just very gently, and see it all lies down flat? So I'll put a pin to hold that and press that edge down. Okay. So here, now we're just going to top stitch this, and when we top stitch, we'll be closing that hole. And everything is all good here. Let me start. Side out so that it cups around the sewing foot so you can get to that edge neatly. If you try cupping it in the other direction, it'll be all wrinkly. Now, across the base of the strap where I had that extra fabric inside, I'm going to sew across again. I'm going to sew across just a couple of times, make me feel like I've got a little better anchor on it. Okay, cut off our little thread tails. The wire goes right into the nose section, right here. It should slip right in there. Give it a little nice little nose bend. And your button is going to go put a nice big pin in here so you can see. Your button will be right about there. Okay, so just sew that button on. You can sew it on by hand or machine. And then the strap will come over and button right there. This is adjustable. This is actually my last little piece here. It's adjustable and um, once it's fitted to the child you can just trim, you know, trim it off. Uh, some of the kids we were finding with the two button um, buttons on either side like the elastic ears sticking out. So this will be all ready to go as soon as you turn on sew on that button and it's a short, quick, pretty little project. All right. Thanks a lot. Good luck.